the Pali word samadhi that we translate as concentration in English. In Thai is translated by a phrase, Dang Jai, which means to set your mind on something. In this case, set your mind on what you're doing, what the mind is doing. Set your mind on one thing. Give it a purpose. It's one of the reasons why we have the chance every evening before the meditation to remind ourselves of what the purpose is. Otherwise, you meditate day, day in, day out, day in, day out, and you begin to forget why you're doing it. And if you've hit a plateau, you start to expect that nothing's going to happen, and things get dull and dry. So you have to renew your vows in the same way they do with marriages sometimes, when they want to remind themselves that this is a relationship they really want to keep going, and it has a lot of potential. So you have to remind yourself, you're here for a purpose. The mind needs a purpose. That's how it functions. As the Buddha said, we fabricate our experience for the sake of having form, feelings, perceptions, fabrications, consciousness. And then we use those things for the sake of happiness. So we have to remember why we're here. Keep that in the background. And then set your mind in doing what needs to be done to get to that goal of happiness, or real happiness. Sometimes you hear about people saying that when the mind gets still, then you frame an intention and things will magically happen in the mind. And it is true that when the mind is still, it can be very suggestible. But the important things in the meditation, you can't simply set your mind and say, okay, I want awakening tonight, or I want deep insights tonight. What you can say is, I want to focus on the breath. I want to be very sensitive to the breath. I want to make sure that all my conversation in the mind is about the breath and the mind's relationship to the breath. You're going to set your mind in getting it into concentration. Remember that the factors of jhana fall into two sorts, those that are causes and those that are results. You can't focus on the results. You keep them in the back of your mind. But the things you really have to focus attention on are the causes, directed thought, evaluation, singleness of preoccupation. Now, directed thought and evaluation are nothing mysterious or mystical. They're things you're doing all the time. To direct your thoughts means you choose a topic and evaluate, and you make comments on it, you ask questions about it. And the mind is doing this all the time. Simply know that you've decided you're going to take those activities and apply them to one thing, the mind's relationship to the breath. What can be done to make the mind more amenable to stay with the breath? What can, make the, what can be done to make the breath? more comfortable and interesting for the mind. And then the singleness of preoccupation, you just keep at it, keep at it, keep at it. It's one thing. Of course, the evaluation has a purpose. You want to make the breath comfortable because you want to create a sense of refreshment, a sense of ease. And so what way of breathing would lead to that sense of refreshment and ease? What way of thinking about the breath would lead to that sense of refreshment and ease? This is where it's useful to perceive the breath as a full body process, something that can saturate all the nerves. That way when the sense of ease comes, say, in the middle of the head, the middle of the chest, then you can think of it connecting up to all the nerves. John Lee's images of connecting electric wires throughout a wilderness. So you have electricity wherever you want it. And once you have that sense of well-being at any one spot, you can spread it around. Then try to maintain it.
Again, it's the direct thought and evaluation that will help you maintain it by directing you to think about how do I perceive this energy, how do I manipulate the breath so I can maintain this sense of well-being. Where do I settle down? Where do I focus my main attention? Try to focus it on some of the crossroads of these different channels of breath in the body. John Lee talks about the middle of the head, base, palate, base of the throat, the tip of the sternum, the spot just above the navel. Those are the main intersections. There are lots of other ones, too. So when you focus on the different spots, what are the different results? Because that's the reason why we're getting the mind into concentration and trying to develop this sense of well-being. So you can see clearly more subtle things going on in the mind. Now there is a problem. When the sense of well-being comes, we tend to settle in there and just stay. It's like being a government, government official and you've been given a really comfortable residence to stay in. So you can do your work in ease, and you forget about the work. You just hang out in your, your nice new digs. And you begin to lose your sense of purpose. So here again, it's important to remember. It's all about seeing what the mind is doing right now. That's what the Four Noble Truths are all about. Actions you're doing in the present moment, some of which are leading to suffering and some of which are leading away from suffering. And the Buddha gives you some pointers, but you've got to see for yourself exactly what do his pointers refer to. What are you doing right now? Where is the craving right now that's leading to suffering? Where is the desire that leads away? You have to learn how to distinguish these things. That gives you something to look for. It gives you another purpose. The mind needs a purpose. Otherwise, it begins to blur out or start looking for entertainment on the side. So there's the purpose in getting the mind to settle down, and there's the purpose in using the sense of well-being, the sense of concentration, to set your mind then on getting some understanding about how you're creating suffering and how you don't have to. The sense of purpose is what gives meaning to the meditation. Just as our lives in general, we have to have a sense of purpose, a sense that we're making choices and that our choices have some impact on our experience, and we can learn how to control that. And so you're going to control your attention and control your intentions. This, to try to understand, what do I do that's causing suffering? And here the word suffering, dukkha, can spread from anything from heavy suffering to very light. This is a problem in the English language. We don't really have a word that corresponds to the full range of dukkha. And I know some people say, well, there's obviously suffering when the mind is outside of concentration, but there's no suffering when it's in concentration. But there is dukkha, there's stress, there's disturbance. And the little movements in the mind, they cause little bits of disturbance here and there, and you want to be able to see that. Because if you don't see it in the small areas, in the subtle areas, then you're going to be a victim of the big ones. So you want to see, what am I doing right now? And what's the impact? And particularly, what is the mind doing right now? What is it doing? What is, how is it talking to itself? The, the different kinds of fabrication, verbal fabrication, is the big issue. How you talk to yourself, how you frame issues, and then how you comment on them. The cravings are expressed in verbalization. Right view, right resolve, 
right effort, right mindfulness, right concentration, all the factors of the path, those are also forms of verbalization. So how are you talking to yourself? And in some cases, the conversation is going to be very subtle, just little whispers here and there. So you want to be able to get the mind still enough to hear the whispering. This too gives you a purpose, Try to keep you focused. Just the question is, can you maintain your focus? Can you maintain your purpose, even as things get very still? I talked to an anthropologist years back. He talked about how modern-day anthropologists, when they study a, a tribe, try to master all the different skills that the people of the tribe have mastered so they can get a sort of an inside feel for the, the culture of the tribe. And one skill they found that they have real trouble mastering is hunting. Because hunting requires a lot of concentration, but it also, also at the same time requires a lot of focus, purposeful focus, alertness. Remembering why you're there. So as the mind gets still, it doesn't forget. It doesn't get drowsy. You've got to learn how to maintain this balance, stillness and alertness together, and keep them purposeful. And that way you're sure to bag your insights. You can't set your mind and saying, tonight I'm going to get an insight, just as the hunter can't say, tonight I'm going to get a particular animal. But you can say, I'm going to try to get the causes in line. and maintain as consistent an alertness as I can. So in this case, the verbal fabrication is there to encourage you. But at the same time, it itself becomes an object of inquiry. This mind talking to itself. Who is it talking to? Who's doing the talking? Why does there have to be talking? There's a little bit of talking that's required to get the mind to settle down, and then it's simply perception, mental fabrication that keeps you going. But then little comments will come in here and there. Why? What are they doing? Who's talking to whom? Why is there this messaging system going on in the mind? It's learning how to ask questions like this that you take things apart. Your way of building up worlds of experience, your way of building up your own sense of your identity it comes out of little building blocks like this. And if you don't see these things as individual building blocks, you're just going to take them for granted. That's what the lesson of all this is. is if you want to gain awakening, you have to learn not to take anything for granted. Don't take the breath for granted. Don't take the body for granted. Don't take your conversation for granted, your perceptions for granted. They're all choices, some of them skillful, some of them not. And you want to get the mind still enough and sensitive enough so it can see the little choices out of which the big ones are made. That's when the insights get really interesting. So set your mind on not taking the meditation for granted. And see where it will lead you.